for true amplitude modulation we want to retain the um, original pitch um, so what we do we need instead of the modulator running from between 1 and minus 1 we want it to um, modulate uh, 1 to 0 so we want sine waves that will give us values from 1 to 0 um, and we can do that uh, by doing a calculation on the um, on the um, on what's coming out of the cycle object here, which is the sine wave. So if I move this down a bit, if I add one oops, to all the values coming out of the cycle object, we will get values that move between. Actually, I'm going to reduce the uh, value of that to 1 hertz Oops. and run it into a signal number box which will read values at 20 milliseconds to make it more accurate And you will notice that now, instead of running between 1 and minus 1, it's running between 2 and 0, because every value is being added, uh, is, is being sort of hiked up by 1. Um, and then if we add a uh, divide by um, 2, we should now have values running between 1 and 0, which is what we wanted. So I can now send that into here. And now we have a um, amplitude modulation or tremolo that goes from loud to quiet over the course of a second. So now it's not happening at double time like it was before. We're not getting any negative phase. We are just getting um, loud to quiet, to loud to quiet, to loud to quiet. And if I increase the rate of that modulation, we retain the original pitch, as you can hear, which is the A. <laughs> That's still there. Um, but we get the sidebands, what are called sidebands, which are the two additional frequencies um, which diverge from the original pitch as I change the, um, as I change the uh, speed of the modulator, or the frequency of the modulator. And those are, once again, the same relationship. They are um, the sum and the difference of the two um, frequencies. Um, so that's fine um, and of course you know you, we can do the same thing as we've done with uh, previous um, uh, oscillators which is to connect them to a keyboard which I think is the next part of the exercise let's just see yes it is Okay, so I'll just do that quickly. So we'll make a K slider. Um, and attach that via an N2F object. Um, and then, just as we have done before, uh, we will add a further multiplication object beneath to cope with overall level, which will be determined by the velocity of the uh, uh, the velocity with which the key is hit. And so divide by one two seven again.
and we know what's happening there so I'm going to get rid of that. So um, now we can change the central frequency. You notice that the timbre changes as I hit different notes. Because the relationship between these two uh, values, the, or the carrier and the modulator, changes as we choose different notes. Obviously the frequency of the carrier is changing, but the frequency of the modulator isn't. Um, so in, in some ways that's kind of interesting. Um, but it may be that we want to uh, keep the timbre consistent over the entire range of the keyboard. And we would do that by making sure that the relationship between these two values is consistent. Um, and we can do that fairly simply by basically multi or making sure that the frequency of the modulator is um, some, I suppose, ratio of the value of the uh, carrier. Um, and again, that can be done quite simply by uh, using a multiplication object. And because I might want to be able to change that at the same time as, or, or sort of while the note is playing, let's just move that down a bit, I'll also add a button object like that. So, what am I doing? If I make this. Um, Oops, I know what I've done, sorry. Yeah, okay, I need to actually send a value from the keyboard. Okay, so we now have um, uh, the note number that goes into M2F, which is going to be uh, of, well, at the moment it's middle C, which is MIDI note 60, that's converted to a frequency is 261.6558. Um, the, the, that is going to a multiplication object which says now that uh, the modulator frequency needs to be a ratio of 1 to 1 to the carrier frequency because it's being multiplied by 1. So it comes out as 261.62558. So both are at that, uh, um, that value. Um, and if I change the, uh, if I change the pitch we will notice that the timbre chain, uh, sorry, the timbre remains consistent while the frequency of both carrier and, uh, carrier and modulator change. And we could change the ratio between those values to something that's a little bit less harmonically uh, consistent or harmonically um, related or something even more complex. And we will notice that once again the relationship between the various pitches within the timbre uh, are the same. Um, so that's that.